Located at the heart of Amsterdam's Museum Square, the Rijksmuseum is one of the world's most renowned art museums and a true must-see. Even if you have only little time to spare, a walk through the Gallery of Honor will offer you a glimpse of Dutch's finest art. 8,000 artistic and historical objects tell the story of 800 years of Dutch history from the year 1200 right up to the present. In 2012, the museum took the unusual step of making some 125,000 high-resolution images available for download via its Rijksstudio web platform, with plans to add another 40,000 images per year until the entire collection of 1 million works is available, according to the museum's director of collections. Focusing on the building itself, it is worth mentioning that the historic design for the Rijksmuseum, which combined the Gothic and the Renaissance styles, had been drawn up by Pierre Caverge, the Rijksmuseum's architect. The official opening of the Rijksmuseum took place in 1885. Going to the passage. The atrium is made up of two spaces that are connected by way of a tunnel underneath the passage. The atrium has its entrance in the passage. The original brick walls of the passage have been replaced with large expanses of glass allowing passers-by to admire the interior courtyards. At more than 2 meters tall, the slogan measures almost 24 meters wide. Launched in September 2004, the sign at the back of the Rijksmuseum has become one of the city's most photographed icons. It always manages to inspire the novice photographer. You rarely see the letters without people in front, behind or on top of the slogan, taking photos and selfies which help market the city through social media. Amsterdam Marketing happily estimates the letters are photographed some 6,000 times a day. Happily, because the original intention, that of promoting Amsterdam abroad in the wake of the financial crisis, has worked far beyond expectation. At the request of the city of Amsterdam, the I Amsterdam letters are to be removed from Museum Plein at the beginning of December 2018. The change in location is in line with the new city government's intention to increase the efforts of distributing visitors more widely. The move supports the strategy to make Amsterdam larger, which includes stimulating repeated visitors to explore different areas of the city. People who would still like to take a selfie with the letter of Museum on Museum Plein will need to move fast. But for those who missed the opportunity, the latter will still be there at Schiphol. A third set of letters already changes location around the city, making appearances at all kinds of events in the city. Visit Rembrandt Harmensun von Rijn's home and workshop. For 20 years, Netherlands' greatest artist lived and worked in this impressive building in the heart of Amsterdam, now a museum, the Rembrandt House Museum. With a 17th century inventory as a guide, the house has been meticulously refurbished with furniture, art and objects from that time to give visitors a complete Rembrandt experience. The museum has an almost complete collection of Rembrandt etchings and stages inspiring exhibitions about Rembrandt, his predecessors, contemporaries and pupils. The Rembrandt House Museum is also a venue for exhibitions of work by contemporary artists who have been inspired by the work of Rembrandt, their 17th century predecessor. 
go and meet him in his own home. Small tip, the daily demonstrations of paint preparation and etching are quite interesting to see. Anna Maria Grossholt was born in Strasbourg, France. She was trained by a Swiss master of wax anatomy, Philip Curtius. Curtius and his young pupil moved to Paris, where, in time, she would model not internal body parts, but instead the likenesses of Voltaire, Louis XVI, Benjamin Franklin, and Jean-Jacques Rousseau. She had lived at Versailles, been art tutor to Louis XVI's sister, and cast the king from life, and later, during the revolution, been ordered by the National Convention to duplicate his severed head. She had the king's blood in her lap. Listen, she used to say, I am history. She may have embellished her life, perhaps exaggerated here and there, but who can blame her for that? She needed her enterprise to succeed. Toussaint lived later in London, and when she died, her collection counted 400 figures. The first Toussaint's cabinet of wax figures opened in London at Baker Street in 1835. In 1972, the second European Madame Tussauds attraction opened in Amsterdam, the Netherlands, at the Dam Square. More an attractive ride in an indoor amusement park than an old-fashioned wax figures cabinet, Madame Tussauds in Amsterdam has been modernized, equipped with multimedia effects, set to employ actors and extras, and like any amusement park, it addresses itself mainly to children and teenage visitors. Nemo Science Museum curates 17,000 technology objects in four core collections lighting, electrical engineering, energy generation and storage, and technology at home. The museum wants to enthuse young people by experimenting for science and technology. Around 38% of visitors are under the age of 18. When did the first electrical appliances appear in our homes? What were they? The story of technology and science is even more compelling when set against the background of the past. It's a past you can see and touch in the special heritage collection. From its humble beginnings as a 13th century fishing village on a riverbed to its current role as a major hub for business, tourism and culture, Amsterdam has had a strong tradition as a center of culture and commerce. The name Amsterdam comes from the river Amstel and the dam that was built to be able to construct the city. It's no coincidence that Amsterdam has become one of the most multicultural cities in the world. The city is now a melting pot of cultures, with residents from 180 different countries. It also embraces a variety of different lifestyles, religions and beliefs. For example, the city is considered by many to be the gay capital of Europe and still has an active squatters movement. It might seem contradictory to outsiders, but the city's enormous variety of residents works by allowing everyone to be who they are and say what they think. The city of Amsterdam can look back on a long and interesting history 
and today it prides itself on a rich cultural life and a diverse population. The people who live here, the people who work here, the people who study here, and the people who visit here are what makes Amsterdam vibrant and complex. Alongside tulips and windmills, the global image of Amsterdam is one of a city entwined with water. Since its development in the 17th century, Amsterdam's canal ring has grown to be one of the world's most unique urban landscapes. And it not only remains a historic and beautiful water network through the city, but a stunning backdrop for fantastic cultural and sporting events throughout the year. Amsterdam has more canals and bridges than Venus. While Venus is the most famous for its canals, this is, isn't because of quantity. Amsterdam, also known as Venus of the North, boasts over 165 canals that compose a widespread network throughout the entire city. And Amsterdam actually has 1,281 bridges, three times as many as Venus. Amsterdam's maritime success in the Golden Age not only led to urban expansion, but a boom in trade and architectural development. This was marked by the building of the city's remarkable canal side estates in the 17th and 18th centuries, most of which are still standing today. Even if you aren't lucky enough to call one of these monuments your home, there are plenty of ways to experience life by the water in both museums and special events in and around the canals. Since 1999, the city's distinctive canal landscape has officially been protected and, in 2010, the Amsterdam Canal Ring was added to the UNESCO's World Heritage List. In 2013, the Canal Ring also celebrated its 400th birthday. So, a great and relaxing way to view some of Amsterdam is by taking a cruise on what Amsterdam is famous for, its many canals. For anyone visiting for the first time, it's an excellent introduction to the city's many sites. There are a number of departure points throughout the city, and the tours are available in a multitude of languages, provided by a number of different operators. Whether it's a one-hour tour, a hop-on, hop-off all-day experience, or a romantic candlelight dinner cruise, there are options for every occasion. And naturally, you can have just as much fun when sightseeing on foot or even following the natives on two wheels. Going further, here are other interesting facts about Amsterdam. The city has been ranked among one of the top 25 safest cities in the world. The crime rate here is much lower than any other European capital. Amsterdam residents are the second largest consumers of coffee in the world. Usually, an Amsterdam local consumes about 3.2 cups of coffee per day. During World War II, at the time of the so-called Hunger Winter, Winter of Hunger, in 1944, people were starving so badly that they had to eat tulip bulbs. The majority of Amsterdam is below sea level. At its lowest point, it is 6.7 meters below sea level. All over Amsterdam, there are hidden water taps under the ground. They were installed in fear of a big disaster so that they could always have drinking water. Tap water is safe to drink. The Netherlands, and especially Amsterdam, which has the best water in the country, has the safest and cleanest tap water in Europe. The water in the Amsterdam canals is so clean that artist Zoo gives its elephants pure drinking water 
straight from the Amsterdam canals. Gin was invented in the Netherlands. It was, and still is, called Jenevier and was originally used for medicinal purposes in the 16th century. Coffee shops are not what you think they are. Coffee shops are alcohol-free establishments where soft drugs legally are sold and consumed. One of the principles of the coffee shop policy is that the sale of alcohol and the sale of soft drugs is separated. Visitors to Amsterdam in the 17th century were surprised about the prostitution being shown so openly in Amsterdam. Also, women walked the streets unaccompanied by men, a sight that was nowhere else seen. Amsterdam has one of the most famous red light districts in the world with window prostitution. There are almost 500 such windows in Amsterdam, next to brothels, for example. Daily, about 1,000 prostitutes are working in Amsterdam, and in a given year, the city sees about 8,000 different prostitutes. When a room is lit with blue or purple light in the Amsterdam red light district, it means the women might possibly be more than just women. Amsterdam's first gay bar still exists. It's Café et Mange on Zidek 63 and it was opened in 1927. The owner, Bet van Biere, was lesbian. She allowed men dancing with men and women dancing with women, but no kissing. Dancing was forbidden in Amsterdam in the beginning of the 20th century. In Amsterdam, people on low income can take their pet to the vet for free once a year. Bees in distress in the world? Not in Amsterdam. Since 2000, there are 45% more bee species in Amsterdam. Amsterdam has worked hard to abolish harmful pesticides and set up special flower gardens inside the city. Every year, on average, 10,000 bikes are dredged out of the Amsterdam canals. Amsterdam houses are built on wooden poles. Most were drilled in during the 17th century which is why many Amsterdam houses tend to be crooked and leaning sideways. Yes, you are not mistaken, Dutch people are the tallest people in the world. There are more women than men in Amsterdam. There is especially a surplus of Dutch young women between 20 and 25 year years old. For every 100 men in this category, there are 145 women. As in most of Europe, the Netherlands uses 230 volts AC, which is 50 cycles, compared to 110-120 volts AC, which is 60 cycles, in the United States and Canada. Upward converters that change 110-120 volts to 220-240 volts are difficult to find in Holland, so bring one with you when visiting. Amsterdam is the capital of the Netherlands, of the Netherlands, but the government of the Netherlands is seated in The Hague. The European Euro is the currency used in Amsterdam. The Dutch law requires that all taxes and service charges be included in the published prices of hotels, restaurants, cafes, nightclubs, salons, and sightseeing companies. The tourist office's advice on tipping is, tips for extra service are always appreciated but not necessary.